Good afternoon. I'd like you to, to welcome you to the ICE annual business meeting. This meeting will last approximately one hour. You may submit questions within your Zoom dashboard in the Q&A window throughout the meeting. The presenters will respond to the questions throughout the presentation and at the end of the meeting. If you have any technical issues, please submit those to the Q&A window as well, and I will follow up with you privately. I would now like to welcome Todd Philbrick, Chair of the ICE Board of Directors. Thank you, Grace, and thanks everybody for being here today. Uh, it's hard to believe the IC Exchange was just two weeks ago and enjoyed seeing so many folks in Savannah. Uh, again, for those that don't know me, I'm, IC I'm Todd Philbrick, I'm ICE's Board of Directors Chair and officially welcome you to the 2022 Annual Business Meeting. Today I'm joined by Denise Rosenthal, Executive Director, Katie Scott, Senior Manager, and Catherine Dower, who is our wonderful Secretary Treasurer. Much of what we're going to discuss today is also in the 2022 Annual Report, which is available for download on ICE's website. Uh, when you download the report, you'll find much more detailed and additional information uh, on our financials, programs, and activities for the year. Today, we're going to provide a programmatic review of 2022, share a quick financial outlook overview, look ahead at 2023 project and initiatives, introduce our new board members, and as Grace mentioned to kick us off, uh, we'll be answering your questions throughout the program today. To that end, uh, use the Q&A button in the bottom of your Zoom tab there to submit it and we'll take pauses at several different points uh, to answer your questions. So now it's my privilege to hand the screen over to Denise Rosenthal, Executive Director, and Katie Scott, Senior Manager, who are gonna share some highlights in our year in review. Denise and Katie. Great, thank you so much, Todd. My first priority for today is to thank the dedicated volunteers who help ICE move initiatives forward each year. We truly rely on our volunteers to develop and provide feedback on the best solutions and programs for our members, the programs you manage and the constituents your organization serve. There are over 200 individuals who volunteer for service on a committee, a board, a council, a special task force in 2022 you continue to contribute to major accomplishments throughout the year. And this year, our committees and task, force, task forces worked on numerous projects. I wanna hit some of those highlights. The DEI task force created the DEI coffee chats, where members can come together and have conversations on any topic related to DEI. Two have been held thus far, and we have an additional, additional one planned for November 9th at 12, noon Eastern. It is for our members only, and you do need to pre-register, but there is no cost uh, to attend. Next, the International Credentialing Task Force created a toolkit that provides credentialing professionals with access to resources and best practices related to expanding a certification program internationally. The toolkit includes uh, testimonials from individual experts about their organization's experience. For many of these programs that I'm speaking of, I will uh, put the links to more information in the chat in just a minute. The public member committee was busy creating many new resources this year, including public member quarterly calls, the public member resources page on our website, and the opportunity to, to host or post a, a complimentary public member position on the ICE Career Center. So please make sure you visit the webpage to start utilizing these resources and engaging with the public member committee. Now, if you're interested in volunteering with ICE next year, please complete our volunteer interest form on the ICE website. The deadline to submit your name is November 28th, which is approaching quickly. Your input and expertise is always welcome and appreciated as we advance the organization and grow the ICE credentialing community. Katie, you're gonna take it from here. Yep. So in 2021, we launched the beta exam for the ICE CCP, a certification program for credentialing professionals. This year, the ICE CCP held its first regular testing window in June, 2022 with a solid response from the community. 
A total of 171 individuals have been awarded the ICE CCP since the beta exam. Congratulations. And 248 applications were submitted for the first three administrations. The next testing window is actually happening right now. It started today. So I want to wish everyone the best of luck. Um, in addition, under the direction of a group of subject matter experts, ICE developed a pre-conference workshop and a self-study guide to support individuals interested in pursuing their ICE CCP. Um, ICE also offered a wide range of professional development programs in 2022. Just to highlight a few, uh, the certificate program for credentialing specialists saw 185 participants this year. Uh, we hosted our first cohort of the leadership development program. Um, 12 individuals were selected, 12 future leaders in the credentialing community to discuss leadership concepts, expand their network, and prepare for leadership in the credentialing community. Uh, the application um, just closed for the uh, program for 2023, and we're really looking forward to hosting this cohort again. Um, this year's webinar program tackled a variety of topics such as diversity and inclusion, board and volunteer recruitment, navigating unprecedented times, test security plans, and the value of credentials. Uh, we also developed three new workshops this year, and we updated the NCCA standards workshop to make sure we align that with the 2021 revised standards. Um, and finally, we hosted the 2022 ICE exchange in Savannah, Georgia. We had 693 attendees join us in person and 38 attendees to join virtually. It was really wonderful to see our community come together again, and we really look forward to connecting back next year at the 2023 exchange in Colorado Springs, which will be in October again. So Denise, want to talk about R&D? Great. Thanks, Katie. The ICE R&D committee was very busy this year with the release or soon to be release of eight projects on topics such as regulatory requirements, forensic data analysis, the future of credentialing, eligibility criteria, job analysis, subject matter experts, live remote proctoring, and passing rates. During the 2022 exchange, we hosted the R&D Summit where we spoke more about these projects and shared what will be coming next year from the R&D committee. A huge thank you to Pat Munson and Tony Zarr for their leadership on this committee. Another major accomplishment for 2022 comes from the NCCA. The 2021 standards go into effect for the January 2023 deadline. And to support this change, we hosted a session at the IC Exchange, which outlined uh, any of the changes in the standards so that you can know what to expect. We also hosted a workshop focused on the 2021 standards and had an add-on option for organizations to learn more about the ISO IEC 17024 standard and the dual accreditation program that ICE has. The NCCA hosted a webinar on creating a test security plan, which will help programs comply with the new standards. And the recording of this webinar is available in the ICE store. The NCCA also distributed two guidance documents to clarify expectations around live remote proctoring and what is considered a material change that should be reported to the commission in advance. And Katie, back to you. Uh, so the NCCA currently accredits 302 certification programs. And between September 1st, 2021 and August 31st, 2022, eight new programs earned accreditation. Um, in 2022, the NCCA also received 36 renewal applications. And a huge thank you to the commission for all your hard work that you're in dedication to the NCCA. Um, and to help answers to commonly asked questions, the ICE released videos explaining the NCCA accreditation application process. Um, and as Denise kind of mentioned just before, the ICE's partnership with the International Accreditation Services, IAS, um, allows programs to apply for dual accreditation to the NCCA and ISO IEC 17024 standards to take advantage of the efficiencies created from the large overlap and the requirements for both standards. Um, the op application process automatically transfers details from the NCCA application that fully or partially satisfy the requirements of ISO IEC 17024. 
uh, five organizations with a total of 13 accredited programs currently hold dual accreditation to the NCCA and ISO IEC 17024 standard. Um, and as Denise mentioned, the workshop that was just hosted in the fall, this is the first one we were able to host since 2019. We're really um, fortunate to bring it back. Um, and the NCCA and IAS are continuing to explore opportunities for further efficiencies for the programs who hold the dual accreditation. Uh, the Assessment Based Certificate Accreditation Council uh, recorded a podcast episode this year for Credentialing Insights podcast. They were discussing the white paper that they authored in late of 2021 on five most frequent problems with ACAP applications. Um, the ACAP program also has a record, record number of applications submitted in 2022. Um, 11 programs have been accredited by the ICE through the Assessment Based Certificate Accreditation Program. And Denise? Great, thanks Katie. In 2022, we launched two valuable resources for our community. The first is the online community hosted on our website. Over the summer, we launched this member only online community, which serves as an open forum for members to connect with peers on program practices, requests for resources and networking. Again, I can share the link to this online community if you haven't yet experienced it. We also launched the Credentialing Insights podcast in late 2021. Uh, featuring conversations on top of mind topics, but this year we released six episodes this year and we have two more that we will be releasing before the end of the year. These are of course free downloaded uh, in or linked from our website, so please do check it out. The PCC or the Professional Certification Coalition continued its work in 2022 as the proliferation of state legislative threats to certification and licensure continued. We have over 100 member organizations participating, and this session we saw 140 bills in 40 different states that impact certification. The coalition is also monitoring various federal legislation that affects certification and the workforce. We, of course, will continue to work in partnership with ASAE and the Pillsbury Law Firm to promote and represent non-governmental professional certification organizations and their programs, as well as their service providers. Katie? Um, the IC community is very strong. We have 450, 415 organizations representing 2,400 individuals. Our community represents diverse industries and professional fields. So ICE strength has always been in our members' willingness to share their expertise and help others in the field. Your collective knowledge serves as a great resource for growing the organizations and supporting professional development. Um, so with that, uh, you're welcome to submit. I see a couple have come in, some questions um, in the Q&A bar, um, but please let us know what other questions you have for us at this time. So there was one question I saw come in um, in about the online community. So that will get posted in the chat and shared out. And then there was another question about the NCCA accredited programs. Um, I about the number of programs that were accredited and how many organizations do those 220 or it was 302, I believe, programs represent. I think we're gonna to have to get back to that question, but we should be able to answer it live in the Q&A window um, and we will follow up with you. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Katie. This is Catherine Dower and I'm the 2022 ICE treasurer and I'm happy to report on the financial health of the organization. So just as a reminder, the financial report for the 2020-2021 audited comparisons can also be found in the annual report that's located on the ICE website. Our auditor, Jones, Moresca, and McQuaid issued another clean audit report on the 2021 um, organizational financials. <clears throat> and according to their report, ICE's total revenue, that is operational plus investments, in 2021 was approximately $2.4 million. The primary sources of revenue were coming from accreditation services, uh, the annual conference and membership dues. 
ICE's total expenses in 2021 were approximately $2.5 million, with the primary sources of expenses coming from the same three areas, accreditation services, the annual conference, and membership and administration. That left us with a net change in net asset total of negative $91,000 in 2021. For the 2021 budget year, ICE leadership believed it was the right time to invest in the organization for programs such as the certification program, a new website and association management system, and other high priority strategic initiatives. Coming into 2021 also held some unknowns about the financial health of our member organizations. So the bottom line was intentionally a negative one. Given the healthy reserves, we are not concerned with this intended loss. In 2021, our overall investment portfolio went up by 8%. As we moved into 22, uh, like many of our member organizations, ICE has been feeling the impact of a volatile stock market. The ICE investment portfolio for 2022 is down approximately 15% from the start of the year through the August statements. Despite this decrease due to past success, our total reserves remain strong as we work to maintain the industry acceptable amount of six months worth of operational expenses. In 2022, the ICE board approved a deficit budget to continue the commitment to growth and investment in programs. We anticipate the year-end financials will perform at least to budget, if not better, and the ICE board will be reviewing the estimated year-end forecast at their next meeting. It has been a pleasure to serve the organization as treasurer. I'm happy to answer any of the questions that you might have. I'm not seeing any questions about financials, but feel free to submit them throughout this conversation or following the presentation. And with that, let me invite Todd back to the main screen. Thank you, Catherine. And most importantly, thanks for your report and leadership throughout this year and the last two years serving as secretary treasurer. So our leadership continues to shape the organization along the strategic vision, which was established to the organization's end statements. And in this pursuit, the board and management are focused on the following projects for 2023. So first up, and there was a lot of talk about this in Savannah, was the future of credentialing project. Uh, based on the report that the R&D committee uh, put out late this year, ICE is planning a variety of resources that we hope will help transform the conversations that you're having outside of your community with your individual leadership boards and organization. Uh, the resources will focus on creating a culture of foresight related to where the credentialing community is going in the fu near future. Next up is the value of accreditation, which will again be a major focus for us in 2023. We'll be examining the tools and building resources to better articulate the value of accreditation to all related accreditation services and stakeholders. Uh, as we continue to grow and develop more programs, IC is evaluating our content strategy to better align our content with all current programming. Uh, this process should streamline development and provide multiple outlets for our content. Uh, special thanks to the R&D committee for their work. They're gonna be re uh, releasing a test disruption report that's going to examine the role of test disruption on validity interpretation of credentialing assessments in early 2023. For our psychometrician members and those who are interested in data, like many of us are, we're happy to announce uh, a partnership with Measure Learning, where IC is going to be adding advanced psychometric and test development workshops in 2023. As Katie mentioned, we're really excited uh, to see the ICE program launch and grow and will continue to grow in 2023. There are two exam administration windows being planned for both the spring and fall. And I highly recommend if you're interested to take the explore taking the exam next year. It's a great accomplishment for folks in our field and the profession and a great milestone for your career. Uh, in addition, ICE is developing optional uh, test prep materials for the ICE CCP, including a workshop practice test self-study guide. ICE is also working towards aligning the professional development uh, for, to align with the ICE CCP domains and is currently developing a system to streamline the reporting of ICE education uh, towards the reaccreditation and re 
uh, renewal for ICE CCP. So we have come to another little break in the action. Let, let me check the Q&A, see if we had any questions. All right, well, um, as you think through them, we're coming to an end. So think of those questions you might wanna put in the chat. But I'm here to sort of uh, talk about the board changes we'll be going through at the end of this year. And I really wanna take this time to recognize my fellow board members and staff and really thank them for their support for the two years that I've been chair these last two years. Your, your expertise and commitment uh, really makes an impact and brings value uh, to all the programs and offerings that IC is able to provide to our community and to our stakeholders. Uh, I'm excited to announce some new incoming board members. Amy Dufresne will be joining us. Uh, Terry Hinckley was reelected for another term and Diane Tyler will be serving on the board as the 2023 chair of the NCCA. Uh, we have a few outgoing uh, members this year. Joy Matthews Lopez, who was the 2022 NCCA chair, and Clarence, Karen Foss, who is our current uh, vice chair, will be leaving in December. And I want to take a moment to recognize Karen uh, for her time and dedication to the ICE. As the chair of the board of directors, I'm excited to award the chair's commendation award to Karen. Uh, in addition to her service on the ICE Board of Directors, she's previously served on the NCCA Commission, the Continuing Competency Task Force, the Research and Development Committee, Nominating Committee, and the Public, uh, Public Member Committee. And those of you who know Karen won't be surprised to learn that she also served in the leadership role in volunteering in the nursing community for decades before joining the ICE community. She uh, always shares her expertise and wisdom and is a constant advocate for up and coming leaders. Uh, her positive energy and dedication to selfless service has really been appreciated as the board navigated the uncertainty of the last few years. So again, congratulations, Karen, and I'll turn the mic over to you if you'd like to say a few words. Thank you. Yes, and thank you, Todd. Thank you to the ICE board of directors and the staff and more importantly, I do want to acknowledge and thank all of the credentialing colleagues that I have had the opportunity to work with, to learn from, and most important, advance our credentialing professions um, through our collaborative efforts. It has just been an incredible, rewarding opportunity for the last 40 years, and I greatly appreciate it. So thank you. And more importantly, I would like to close with a note to please volunteer for the ICE committees. It is such a rewarding experience, but in addition, you will meet and you will be able to network with colleagues, bring things back to your organization, and to be able to continue the movement and moving credentialing forward. So thank you very much. Thank you, Karen, and congratulations again. And thank you, a call for volunteers uh, due at the end of this month. So uh, please, please, please volunteer. Um, you certainly get more than you give. Um, so excited to announce our new officers for 2023. Uh, Sarah Blair Lake will be our chair. Bill West is our vice chair and Maria Ryan will be stepping into the secretary uh, treasurer role for ICE. And uh, special congratulations to Sarah. She'll be our chair next year. I know she's going to be a great leader uh, for the organization and the board. Thank you again for your service. And now I wanted to turn it back over to Denise for our final uh, questions and any wrap up. Great. Thanks, Todd. I'm looking at the Q&A and I'm not seeing any additional questions. I had a couple of good questions clarifying uh, the number of programs and the number of organizations that are accredited. So thank you for that. Uh, I did put the uh, link for the online community in the uh, Q&A, uh, but we'll make sure that's in future emails as well so that you can get connected to your fellow colleagues in the community. So if there are no other questions, we thank you for joining us today. Anything that we didn't cover that you wish we had, please drop us a note and we'll be happy to answer those questions. There will be a recording of today's meeting uh, on the ICE website along with the slide deck in case you missed uh, any portion or you are hoping to get uh, a review of any section of the presentations. 
I'm seeing one additional, oh, that's just a thank you from James. Thank you, James. <laughs> so thank you for your participation today and we do hope that you have a wonderful week. Thank you so much. <laughs>